I just got some really bad news. Did you know that these derailleur pulleys will actually ruin your derailleur? Did you know that if you wear a chamois while you ride your bike, that means you have a weak butt? Or that these tubeless valves are stupid because I shouldn't be running tubeless at all? Or that this sound is just me letting everybody know that I wasted my money. But the worst part of all is that I didn't learn any of this stuff until after I bought all these products. Welcome back to the Dutchman's Den, everybody. I'm JT the Dusty Dutchman. And everybody knows that the best place to go for the best opinions is the internet. But what I find most interesting about opinions on the internet is that there's really never any middle ground. Opinions are either on one extreme or the other. I did a little experiment and I went fishing for your opinions on a few select bike parts. And I did them in the deep, dark, savage waters of the YouTube short. Now's where the fun starts, because today, with a little help from Aaron, aka Fruit Punch, we're gonna read some of those comments, compare your opinions to mine, and finally find out if I think these products are good or garbage. All right, let's get into the first product. We are gonna start with these JRC derailleur pulley wheels. I got these JRC derailleur pulley wheels off of Amazon for a fraction of the price of the high-end brands. They claim to have a hybrid ceramic bearing in them, but are they good or garbage? Hey guys, Fruit Punch here. Just running through some of the comments on the JRC pulley wheels. Cheap bike parts are like cheap partners. They don't tend to last long. They give you constant hassle and are just plain old cheap. I've seen pulley wheels like this crack. Metal polish make more noise. Can't knock it till you try it. Are they good? Run Shimano, period. End of discussion. So, so far I've put about 100 miles on these pulleys and I kind of forgot that they're there. I also didn't find that they make any noise whatsoever over the plastic pulleys. They just kind of look cool. Now, since these wheels don't flex like the plastic ones, if this derailleur was a little bit out of alignment, could it prematurely wear the derailleur? Maybe? The only downsides I can see are there is a little bit of anodization wear on the teeth, which I think is to be expected. So I think what it comes down to for me with this product is they pretty much weigh the same within two grams of the plastic pulleys. Even if they spun a lot freer and faster than the plastic pulleys, would I really ever notice that? Probably not. So it really comes down to aesthetics, which they certainly look cool, but I find myself having to clean them more, which kind of sucks. So I think overall, these are a good product. They do what they're supposed to do, but I wouldn't buy them again. So in the spirit of this review, I gotta go garbage. All right, let's talk underpants, specifically the Beneath North Shore Chamois. These are cycling specific underwear. These are called the North Shore Chamois and they're made by a company called Beneath. And for those of us that aren't as comfortable wearing Lycra anymore, excuse me, these just might be the ticket to stop you from blowing your butt out on the trail. But are they good or garbage? Say no to Chamois, they're for roadies not mountain bikers. Yeah, but when do we get to see them on you? LOL, absolutely not. $85, no way. Bibs are always superior. Just wear them underneath and you can buy them for much less. You should wear these okay your face, pal. Hands down, the best chamois I've tried. I have tried so many different manufacturers' chamois in different thicknesses and different styles and in bib shorts and in regular shorts. I've been wearing these a lot and I assumed I would just wear them for mountain biking, but I actually wear them on the road too. It's an awesome casual solution because you can still put pretty much any type of shorts over these and still be comfortable on the bike, but not look like you're wearing a diaper. The chamois seems to be holding up well after many, many rides and many, many washes. It still has some good firmness to it. The ball bag thingy is actually kind of nice. I will be ordering more of these. So for me, this is an easy one. These are good. 
Inside of here is a DT Swiss 54 tooth ratchet upgrade kit. And this one was a little interesting. This DT Swiss ratchet upgrade kit is gonna take my cassette engagement points from 18 to 54. But is it good or garbage? Yeah, I upgraded two bikes and went back to 18 due to the high pitch noise. Hate it. Seems like a waste for a gravel bike. Less durable as well. Sorry, these fast hubs are only useful in mountain biking. They are loud even in traffic. That's a downgrade. It's only good for sound. No! <laughs> now, a higher engagement hub certainly does feel smoother and is extremely helpful in technical riding situations on a mountain bike. I just don't know that it really is necessary on a gravel bike. I can feel the smoothest in the engagement when I'm on and off the pedals. I just don't know if that's really needed. As far as longevity of the ratchets and that a 54 tooth would wear out quicker, I don't agree with that because with more points of engagement, you're spreading the load over more points. So basically you have less force being applied per tooth. And as far as the extra noise, yeah, it's louder. And out on the road or on the gravel, it's a little annoying. So in the right application, this upgrade kit is good. But would I spend another $120 to do it on my gravel bike? No. So in this application, I think this upgrade kit is garbage. Next up, we got these. Fillmore tubeless valves. These are the new Fillmore tubeless valves, and they claim to have redesigned this old school valve so that it no longer gets sealant stuck in it and it flows three times better. But are they good or garbage? Well, if money's not a problem, heck yeah. Worth every penny I've spent on them. Have not had a clogged valve since I switched to them at the beginning of last season. I need those. Hell yeah they are. No more bent Presta cores or them getting cross-threaded. Nice. Worth every penny. I'd pay $50 just to get the feeling back in my fingertips from dealing with the Presta micro nut. You get used to a certain amount of resistance when you fill up a tire with a Presta valve and these have zero resistance. So immediately I thought maybe my pump was broke or the valve was broke and then I realized that the tire was just inflating with air very quickly. I love that there's not a separate valve core that will spin off accidentally with your cap from time to time. I also love that I don't have to remove the valve core when I'm trying to seat a tubeless tire. I also like that there's less chance of these getting stuck from road salt. And I love the fact that someone finally was fed up with the Presta valve and came up with a whole new design that seems to work very well. So for all those reasons, I think this is another easy one. These things are a little pricey, but I'm definitely buying these from now on. So these are good. All right, next, let's talk Zwift. This is Zwift. And with just a bicycle and a smart trainer, you too can join the wild and wonderful virtual world of Watopia. But is it good or garbage? It is a great tool for base training and the races give you some extra incentive to push yourself. Worth it, my entire training for the Costa Rica Arenal Pick MTB was inside on Zwift. I love it. I come out of the gate in the spring with base miles and fitness. I'm ready to hit when spring hits. I've put 34,000 plus on Zwift. It is worth it. Looks sweet. so bad so i've been using an indoor trainer over the past five or six years but this last year was the first time i ever tried zwift and i can say without question that with zwift this is the hardest indoor cycling i've ever done for me it's more than just the fact that the smart trainer will add resistance when you go up a hill for example there's also like a personal element to me, like you don't wanna get passed by people because you know they're actually people, not robots. 
And there's little things like cool scenery, you can see weird stuff like dinosaurs, you can upgrade your bike and get different outfits. Just these little things that get you to push yourself just a little bit harder than you normally would. So I'll be on Zwift from here on out until something better comes along. I think it's worth the $15 a month and I say without question that Zwift is good. Well, I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys did too. Thanks so much for your comments. Obviously, I couldn't have made this video without you guys, so thank you. Please let me know if you guys got any value or any entertainment out of these videos because I'd be happy to make more. So until the next one, don't forget to get outside and get on your bike because good things will happen. Oh, and if you want to see a different type of review video, I got I got plenty. I could put one like, like right here. And I, I actually don't just do review videos. I do like build videos, kind of trail video, videos. I do all kinds of, you guys could really just check out whatever you want. <laughs>